You're watching ABC 7 News at 4, starting with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon, I'm Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Uh, thanks for joining us here on ABC 7 News at 4 for this Monday afternoon. And things are pretty quiet, thankfully, for a pickup and drop off for school uh, kids today. Uh, school returning across much of the Sun Coast and Casey Key uh, webcam showing fairly calm conditions out there. We still have this westerly wind, which has brought us that again, harmful impacts of red tide still getting reports of it. And you can see we had a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day today. Temperature still warm though into the upper 80s to low 90s and that wave action not all that high. What we have is a trough of low pressure still in place over the southeast United States and this trough will continue to hang on for at least one more day. We have again a westerly flow and that is allowing us to see mainly inland storms this afternoon as expected. Not much going on near the coast. It's staying pretty quiet right now and it should do so through the remainder of the next couple of hours. Uh, you can see some heavier weather to the north of us right now where a little bit more moisture is residing. 88 degrees right now feels like 96. The humidity lower and winds at the southwest at 11. The forecast for the future tonight showing inland storms winding down around 11 and then a few pop up showers possible for again a drop off tomorrow. So a chance for a few showers along the coast, but our rain chance is really quite low considering the time of year we're in. We'll have more on that and take a look at the tropics coming up in a few minutes. Jacqueline Scott. All right, Bob, thank you. Now to our top story, a new school year brings some major security changes. In Sarasota County, the highly anticipated district police force was launched today. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick met with a few of those new officers and was in some of those elementary schools on the first day back. She joins us now from district headquarters. Jess, how are things going so far today for those students? Well, Jacqueline and Scott, everything has been running smoothly so far. 12 officers from this new school district police department are spread out in elementary schools all across the county. District officers are specifically covering the elementary schools in the cities of Northport and Sarasota. Meanwhile, 10 sheriff's deputies are covering the schools in the outlying areas while the district gets its remaining officers trained. The goal between now and October is to get all 24 district of officers integrated into the schools. That'll happen intermittently as the officers finish the crossover academy and district training. Now, two of these officers have a special tie with this new police department. I'll have their story coming up tonight at 6. For now, reporting live at the landings, Jess Dowdrick, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, Jess, thank you so much. New developments now in the Stand Your Ground case out of Clearwater. That's gathering national attention. The Pinellas County State Attorney says Michael Draca has now been charged with manslaughter in the shooting death of 28-year-old Marquise McLaughlin. The Pinellas County Sheriff initially refused to charge him based on the controversial state law. Drake has accused of shooting and killing McLaughlin during a July dispute over a handicapped parking spot. Manatee County Sheriff's and deputies investigating a shooting in Palmetto. Shots were heard on 9th Avenue Drive East just before 11 o'clock last night. Deputies say someone left the scene in a white four-door car. Two homes were hit by projectiles, but no one was hurt. An update now on a local state house candidate under fire after reports she lied about receiving a college degree. Republican Melissa Howard is running for the state house district 73 seat in Sarasota and Manatee counties. Howard posted pictures last week of a degree in transcripts from Miami University in Ohio in response to a news report claiming she never received a degree there. But now Miami University's general counsel is saying the degree in her picture appears to be fake. Telling ABC 7 in a statement, quote, the picture of the diploma that was posted on Howard for House 73 Facebook page does not appear to be an accurate Miami University diploma, unquote. Howard's campaign and the Republican Party of Sarasota have both declined to comment. Jacqueline joins us now with that stunning theft of a plane right off the runway at one of the country's busiest airports. Yes, Scott, authorities say it was about 7.30 on Friday evening when a baggage handler for Horizon Air, Richard Russell, took control of an empty Q400 passenger plane at Seattle Tacoma Airport. Taking to the air, Russell performing dangerous stunts, diving nose first, even flipping upside down at one point. Military jets scrambled as people on the ground looked on in horror. Russell seemed giddy with excitement at times, even chatting with Calm Air traffic controllers. I played video games before, so I, uh, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit. I know how to put the landing gear down. 
With no pilot's license and no known experience piloting, questions remain about how he could take off and fly a plane like this. The FBI says Russell had no ties to terrorism. A stolen airliner in the post 9-11 era now prompting a hard new look at this potential security loophole. Now to a frightening crash that would ultimately become a test of faith. This Aeromexico flight crashed during takeoff in Mexico, but miraculously all 99 passengers and four crew members escaped alive, including Chicago priest Ezequiel Sanchez. This weekend he had a happy homecoming in Illinois where he gave a mass and spoke out about the true miracle that occurred that day and how so many survivors ran back to the plane to help those that were injured. Well, the lawyer for the grieving parents of a 19 year old football player now calling for the head coach at the University of Maryland to be fired. Coach DJ Durkin already on administrative leave and the school is investigating after an offensive lineman Jordan McNair died earlier this summer. McNair was reportedly doing conditioning drills on May 29th when he collapsed after showing signs of extreme exhaustion and then died 15 days later. Multiple people are telling ESPN that Durkin's program flourished on a quote toxic coaching culture. An FBI agent who sent anti-Trump texts has now been fired. Peter Strzok was a lead investigator in the Russia probe before the text surfaced. His attorney now says those texts were reviewed internally. The FBI Office of Professional Responsibility recommended suspension and demotion, but his attorney says the deputy director of the FBI overruled that determination and Strzok was fired instead. He's been with the Bureau for the past 22 years. Well, let's send it back to Scott with the latest on red tide on our Suncoast beaches. Scott. Well, Jacqueline, today we're seeing more dead fish wash up on some Suncoast waterfronts. Some people living off Westmoreland Drive in Sarasota woke up to dead fish along Sarasota Bay. We checked in with Sarasota County and a spokesperson tells us crews are fanned out across beaches again today. Siesta, Venice and Brohard beaches being mechanically cleaned and Indian Mound and Blind Pass being cleaned by hand. Over the weekend, more than 14 tons of fish were removed from Lido and three tons were cleared from Siesta. In Manatee County, crews are clearing some fish from Bean Point southward. Another crew is concentrating on Coquina Pass and to the north. Lombo Key Beach is also rate right clear of dead fish today. The red tide bloom causing people to come together and demand action. Organizers of the Hands Along the Water held a peaceful gathering Sunday holding hands in solidarity along Suncoast beaches. Their goal, to get the attention of state leaders, demand change, get more funding for cleanup and research, and get a plan in place for how to deal with this ongoing red tide crisis. Florida Fish and Wildlife will release its next red tide report Wednesday. Moat Marine uh, updates its beach reports on a daily basis. A Bradenton man reaches the 100-gallon donor milestone at a local blood bank. Jim Wubin started donating blood after he started teaching in 1988 at Bradenton Christian School. Wubin's blood type is AB positive. The blood center staff asked him in 2002 to start donating his universal donor platelets and plasma since that would be the best gift for patients. One blood says that almost 200 people have achieved this milestone and Wubin is now one of them. All of them are heroes. Still ahead at four, a new study claims red light cameras are not making some roads safer. What the Sarasota Police Department says about the overall effectiveness of these cameras. And rescue like no other for deputies in Minnesota after a giant floating unicorn with rainbow colored wings wasn't able to fly free over in, out of those weeds. Plus the latest on firefighters efforts in California as they continue to battle more than a dozen fires across the state. Hunger is a growing problem in our area, and a huge number of Suncoast residents are suffering in silence. It could be your coworker, your child's classmate, or your friend fighting to secure their next meal. But you can help. ABC7 is partnering with local organizations to help feed the Suncoast. Go to mysuncoast.com slash hunger to join the fight. Help us help the hungry. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Hello, Mom. Amanda's mom's appointment just got rescheduled for today. Amanda needs right at home. Our customized care plan provides as much or as little help 
as her mom requires, whether it's a ride to the doctor or help around the house. Oh, of course. Tom, I am really sorry. I've got to go. Look, call right at home. Get the right care right at home. The Player Center invites you to explore the family dynamic in the classic story of On Golden Pond. The Tony Award winning play opening August 9th is funny, thoughtful, and brutally honest. Call the players at 365 2494 or visit us online at theplayers.org. On Golden Pond is calling you. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. According to a new survey by U.S. News & World Report, three of Alabama's top four hotels and resorts are part of the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail Resort Collection. The Grand Hotel Marriott Resort in Point Clear, the Battle House Renaissance Mobile Hotel & Spa, and the Renaissance Birmingham Ross Bridge Golf Resort & Spa. Hey, we didn't invent Southern hospitality, we just offer more of it. Visit rtjgolf.com resorts to find out more. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. A new study shows some drivers will accept the high risk of getting into a crash at intersections with red light cameras in order to avoid getting a fine. And now researchers are questioning if the programs endanger overall safety. ABC 7's Erica Jackson joins us live from Sarasota to share why some researchers believe drivers may sacrifice their safety at these intersections. Erica? Scott, good evening. A Texas-based study found three times as many crashes are likely to take place within 200 feet of intersections like this one compared to other areas of the road. That same study found cameras reduce the number of cars running red lights since drivers will attempt to stop when the light turns yellow. While the number of T-bone crashes has gone down at intersections with cameras, the study found non-angle accidents like fender benders increase when there are cameras present. The Sarasota Police Department believes red light cameras improve overall safety, which is supported by a separate study. But the number of deaths has gone up in areas in the country where red light cameras have been removed. And coming up tonight on ABC 7 News at 6, we'll take a look at the numbers here in Sarasota to find out if the number of crashes have gone up or down at intersections with red light cameras. Reporting live in the city of Sarasota, Erica Jackson, ABC 7, your Coast News. All right, Erica, thank you. And first alert traffic, another road in downtown Venice will be closed for a while due to an ongoing beautification project there. Miami Avenue from Harbor Drive to Nassau Street will be shut down. Crews will be replacing stormwater drains down the center of the road. The work should last for about two weeks and detours will be in place. Let's send it to Jacqueline now in the newsroom for a look at what's trending today. Scott, chasing a unicorn was an actual real job for a sheriff's deputy in Minnesota. Take a look at this video of that deputy rescuing two women who were stuck on a lake in a unicorn flotation device. The Ch Chisago County Sheriff's De Office posted this video on its Facebook page on Saturday. It shows the deputy throwing a rope to the stranded women and then pulling them to shore. That Facebook post said the entire scene was a front row seat to the greatest show on earth. Well, some incredible video out of New Jersey shows cars being tossed around in a river like toys. Take a look. This is video from Little Falls. Heavy thunderstorms swept through Saturday and dropped around five inches of rain, which then caused water to back up quickly. The Chrysler Jeep Dodge dealerships actually sits near the Peckman River, and as flooded waters rose, cars were submerged in that area. Some were swept into the river, along with cars washed away from a nearby shooting range. And what should have 
been a normal check underneath the hood of a car almost gave one man a heart attack. A Massachusetts man discovered this boa constrictor sitting on his engine in his car. He called police and the snake is now in the hands of an exotic animal specialist who says that red tail boa appears to be in good health and is likely someone's pet who slithered away. No, thank you. Well, let's send it back to Scott in the studio for a look at a recall that could be affecting dozens or hundreds of people across the country. Well, Jacqueline, Vitamix is recalling more than 100,000 blenders due to a risk of injury. The company has received 11 reports so far of people getting cut when their hands came in contact with the exposed blades. The recalled products include Ascent and Venturist series, 8-ounce, 20-ounce blending containers. Products affected were sold at Costco and Williams-Sonoma and on Vitamix's website. Customers with the affected product are urged to stop using these blenders and get a free repair kit. Days after introducing its new smartphone, the Galaxy Note 9, Samsung is now reportedly ready to shut down one of its factories in China. The Electronic Times reports the biggest smartphone maker in the world is considering closing that plant because of slowing sales in China and rising labor costs there. Five years ago, Samsung owned 20% of the Chinese mobile market. This year, it is only 1%. Tesla and its CEO Elon Musk could be headed to court. Two new lawsuits accuse Musk and Tesla of violating federal securities law by allegedly making false statements to boost the company's stock price. The complaints allege Musk looked to mislead investors by claiming on Twitter that he had secured funding to take Tesla private. That news helped boost Tesla's stock price. But most of those gains have now since been lost due to reports that federal officials are investigating the claims. Time now to get a check on our first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. It's got some nocturnal thunderstorms last night, produced some locally heavy rainfall, up to four to five inches in some isolated areas. Uh, that way is a webcam showing uh, some clouds now. Not much rain at all today. Uh, most of the activity is to the north of us and to the east of our immediate viewing area. Uh, right now you can see some heavier showers, or, or I should say, uh, clearing skies off in the distance. Heavier showers now located to the north of us, rotating around this area of high pressure, which will get bumped up and eventually position itself further off to the north. That happens on Wednesday. It'll reside over north Florida, and we'll get back to that east to southeasterly wind flow, more so on Thursday and Friday as opposed to Wednesday, but that'll be happening over the upcoming 48 hours. You can see the heavier storms to the north again, uh, down to our southeast, a line of intense storms there, but uh, had some very heavy rainfall on Saturday here too, in some isolated areas, but nothing like that now. All is quiet. We're looking for a chance for that land breeze to generate a few showers and maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two overnight. Uh, like we saw this morning. You can see some rain well offshore and, as I said, up north near uh, Haines City. Well, the overall water vapor content is not all that uh, dry right now across the state, and that's the reason why we saw some of those impressive rainfall amounts this morning. A lot of dry air located to the east of our area right now, and as far as the wind flow goes, we will see a little land breeze develop uh, after midnight tonight. It will turn around to a, an easterly direction for a short period of time. And then we'll get back to that west component uh, throughout the late morning and afternoon as it switches around to the west. That sea breeze will generate only a few isolated showers and a few thunderstorms. You can see the activity tonight winding down as it heads off to the north for the most part. And we'll see uh, clearing skies. And here comes uh, just after midnight a few showers, a few storms developing on that land breeze. And then by 3.30, maybe one or two isolated thunderstorms are possible as we move through. Uh, looks like uh, drop off time. We may have to dodge a few showers. Not a big rain chance uh, midday still showing some activity around, but it'll be widely scattered. The rain chance not all that high at 30 percent for a few passing showers with the heaviest part of the storms well inland and to our north throughout the afternoon. Wednesday, similar conditions. It uh, looks like uh, we'll start to go through that transition, though. We may see a few afternoon showers and storms popping up. Well, it has been quiet in the tropics. Not the case 14 years ago when Charlie was making his way right toward Charlotte Harbor. This is the anniversary of that. Again, you can see there's a system here that we're watching. 20% chance developing moving to the north. Uh, all is quiet in the uh, main development region as a result of some cooler water temperatures there. We, are, we were watching that area right there, not uh, too impressive right now. But water temperatures, although cold, have been warming over the past week down there. But the news is the area in blue is the hostile environment, and that's the forecast. It's all throughout the uh, Caribbean. No chance for any development there. Uh, starting to get a little bit better chances there in the Atlantic as we move through time. Uh, but then again, some more dry air moves in, some stronger winds move in, and so 
uh, conditions are not favorable for much development in the Atlantic at this point. 86 degrees, our current temperature in Jacksonville now, 88 in Miami, and temperatures around town all into the upper 80s to mid 80s right near the water. Uh, 90 degrees in Arcadia, Wachula at 90, Sebring at 91, and the feels like temperatures not not too oppressive at this point. Let's go to the forecast to show you what's happening for boaters tomorrow. Winds will be out of the uh, southeast, uh, switching to the southwest later on in the day. Seas will be running one to two feet with a light chop on the bays and inland waters. The seven day forecast and just a slight chance for a few scattered showers. Not bad for the first week of school in Manatee County and uh, looks to be OK. 30% chances for scattered showers and storms in the afternoon. We'll get back to that southeast wind on into Thursday and Friday with a chance for some late day showers coming back toward the coast. Once again, uh, if you haven't done so already, and I think most of you have, we want to tell let you tell your neighbors, tell your friends to download the ABC 7 weather app. First alert weather app. Just go to your app store, look up WWSB first alert weather and download that and also download the news app at the same time and keep up to date with all the latest news trends and things happening in the news as well. Well, across the country, Bob, but we're finally getting some encouraging news for those crews battling wildfires in California. They've been doing this for weeks now. They were able to make a massive gain in getting the Holy Fire uh, under control over the weekend. That's the one in Southern California going from 10% containment to more than 50%. Almost half of the 21,000 people under the evacuation were able to return home. At least 10 other large fires are burning across California, stretching uh, exhausted fire crews very thin. The largest fire in the state history at the Mendocino uh, complex is made up of the ranch and river fires in northern part of the state. It's charred more than, get this, 336,000 acres and is close to being contained. That's uh, much better than we've seen in recent yeah. weeks. Thank you, Bob. Coming up, we'll take a look at the works of art created by carvers using nothing but chainsaws. Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Roberts from Suncoast View. Coming up live Tuesday morning at 9, we'll learn about creation stations where residents can go use free technology for personal projects to the libraries like 3D printing or digitization. Plus, Council Oak at Hard Rock Tampa joins us in the kitchen. It's all coming up Tuesday morning live at 9. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels, because love has no labels. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to Mesobook.com. Clogged pores are disgusting. Introducing Dermasuction, the easy way to suck that yuck out of your pores. Dermasuction removes blackheads and dirt from your pores. Just look at everything it extracts. The secret's the gentle vacuum action. Watch as Dermasuction extracts so much yuck, leaving your skin feeling clean and youthful. The gunk that had been pulled out, I was pretty horrified, but better in the Dermasuction than on my face. It's almost addictive because you can see all the stuff coming out of your skin that you don't even really know is there. Call now to order your dermosuction for just $19.99. We'll also include our small and large body probes, the sonic microdermabrasion probe, and the handy travel case, all absolutely free. Order now and you can double the offer. Just pay a separate fee. You can get all this, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-213-9301. That's 1-800-213-9301. Or visit dermosuction.com. So call 1-800-213-9301 now. <laughs> Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. 
Another pair of satisfied emotions. Looks to me like elation and maybe some amazement. It's part of the Honda Summer Spectacular Event Experience. You could say satisfaction comes standard here, just like the Honda Accord comes standard with a luxurious roomy interior. <laughs> all at the Honda Summer Spectacular Event. We see it all the time. Visit your local Honda dealer and test drive the Honda Accord, 2018's North American Car of the Year. Master chainsaw carvers in Wisconsin gathering to turn logs and stumps into works of art. It's a noisy competition, but that was the sound as carvers from all over the world wrapped up the Lake Superior Chainsaw Sculpture Championship yesterday. The master carver spent 23 hours creating a masterpiece. The event allows them to reunite and showcase their passions, and the carvings were all then put on auction, where half of the money goes to covering the cost of the event, and the other half goes back to the artist. All right, let's get to Jacqueline again in the newsroom with a look at some of the stories we're working on today. Scott, over 43,000 students and 5,000 employees headed off to their first day back at school today in Sarasota County. Coming up at 5, we'll hear how close the district is to filling all vacant teacher positions. And at 6 o'clock, voters in 18 of Florida's 67 counties began casting ballots today for the August 28th primaries. We'll take a look at the turnout at one early voting location. And tonight at ABC 7 with Alan Cohn, an in-depth look at all the changes students and staff will see in the classrooms and hallways this school year. Let's send it back to Bob for a final look at our forecast. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you survived the first day of school for your little toddlers there. Uh, Weather-wise, it turned out okay as far as driving goes. Uh, remember, slow it down. You know, we're in that habit of not um, slowing it down during school zones now, so got to get back in that habit. Uh, winds out of the southwest at 5 to 10 uh, miles an hour. If you're going to be watching the sunset tonight, and this was Friday nights by Cindy Desmond. What a beautiful and spectacular one that was. Sunset will be at 810. Days are getting shorter, but it's still hot out there. Uh, despite the uh, less sun that we are, we are seeing. And we are looking at uh, the viewer photos that were sent in last week. This is uh, Venice Jetty. You may have not caught this Friday night. So uh, Suzanne getting that one. Nice shot, Suzanne. Uh, here's a look at the radar picture. We have this trough in the jet stream still hanging on. That's really been a disruptor all summer long, this trough in the uh, eastern United States. And that was the case during... Hurricane Charlie, too, we had a trough that made it all the way down into the eastern states. We'll talk more about Charlie coming up a little bit later. Scott, back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Thank you for joining us at 4. We'll see you again in 30 minutes.